Cassandra and um, Diane, but um, I think we can get started. We've got a, still a lot to go over. If yep. There was a request made that after about an hour, it'd be nice to take like a five minute break. And um, so let me know if it gets to be after eight and we haven't done that yet because I certainly can, can do that. Um, did everybody read the February 13th minutes? Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion to accept? I move, we, uh, I move, uh, wait a minute, I have a, it says in the minutes under number five, further discussion of CPA payments was moved to the next meeting's agenda. Is that correct? That's the amount that we put into the CPA fund for administration expenses. Okay, okay. We didn't, I did put that off. Okay, good. Thank you. That's all. I have just one correction, and that's the spelling of my name, if it matters. Oh, I tried to fix it. What, is, what, what are the two dots? Is, is that an umlaut? What's that called? Yeah, it's a umlaut over the E, but my last name is S-M-Y-T-H-E. Oh, Y-T-H-E. -E. Yeah. Okay. S-M-Y-T-H-E. Smythe-Freed? Yes. Okay. S M Y T H E dash breed. Is there a dash? Yes. Okay. Pardon? Is there a dash between Smythe and Yes, Freed? hyphen. A hyphen. hyphen. Got it. Okay. Correction will be made. Okay, Thanks. good. Thank you. I move we accept the minutes as presented with the corrections. <clears throat> I second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? So at this point, I think we're seven zero zero. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, so much. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, okay, Andy, every time you thank me, it's one more nail in me nominating you to be the secretary next time. <laughs> It's, it's going to be quite the come down, let me tell you. <laughs> there you go. Y years ago, I took the minutes and uh, for Joe Fitzgibbons, the first chair, and uh, he never asked me again after I spelled Hadley Dyke wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am going to share a screen for the treasurer's report. Cassie's not mm -hmm. on yet, so I can run through it quick. Um, does everyone see this okay? <laughs> Now we can, yep. Yeah. So we did get the January 31st figures. And the main difference between what you saw last month is that we did get the state another 61,000 from the state. And we also got a good bit of the real estate surcharge that was due for February 1st. So that brings our um, general available fund at a million two seventy four. We have the reserve of 500 on top of that, and housing set aside is 208,339 for a subtotal of 1,982. Um, we still have 1,394 that's reserved for already approved expenditures. So the total CPA fund is now 3,377,000. We did discuss putting, we voted on putting 50,000 in each of the set asides. Um, mm -hmm. We still have to vote on the clawbacks. But really, our potential most likely is to have 50,000 in open space, recreation, 79,550 in historic, um, 20, 258,000 in housing, our 500. And then we still get the available is a million one twenty four, um, And we come up to the same total. Mm -hmm. And then we'll discuss, you know, the potentials. So here's the revenue. Um, so what changed is the amount of the surcharge and the state distribution. And the other nice thing was our earnings on investment actually turned positive. <laughs> so um, hopefully that continues through through June 30th. Mm -hmm. But um, that was nice to have that. So we're already at 471. We do expect another 70,000 with um, the surcharge that will be due for May. So that'll bring us up um, closer to 540,000. Um, again, earnings on investments can swing that a little bit as well. Any questions before this disappears? No. Nope. Nope. 
Thank you very much, Mary, for doing it. We appreciate it. You're welcome. I'll bring it back up if we need it for our discussion. Um, so we have our, our CPA applications. And the first one is the Hadley Sampler Preservation. And let me just pull up. I've got some notes um, just to look at while we're doing Alan, this. Alan said he would not be here tonight, right? He had a trial. Alan's not here, but he did contact me. Um, he said, and Susan's on the line. Um, he said he had checked with Susan Lisk at Porter Phelps Huntington because one of you had said that there's some samplers there that might be good to be preserved as well. Um, <clears throat> Susan, do you want to unmute and address this? I can tell you what Alan said, but um, if you'd like to. Mary, I think it would be best if you said what Alan had okay. to say first. Alan and said that. I, I may make a comment. Sure. Alan said that he had talked with Susan and they do have some nice samplers. Um, it probably isn't, uh, it, there isn't time to have their samplers added to this application, um, but it's something that they might consider in the future doing a similar type of, of preservation with theirs. They are interested in coming to the April 23rd sampler presentation by this expert, Lynn Anderson, um, which would be great to to have her input on the Porter Phelps Huntington samplers as well. Would you like to add anything, Susan? No, I just would like to say it would be wonderful if the committee voted to, um, you know, fund this project for the Hadley Historical uh, Society. It's the first application they've ever made um, to CPA. So um, it's nice to see that funding could go to projects like this in the town of Hadley. Thank you, Susan. Does somebody want to make a motion? I guess we should start with that to um, approve this application. I would make a motion to approve it. Is there a second? I would second that. Now we can go into discussion. Mm -hmm. Any comments from people? Uh, a, just a clarification, we're just approving a, to present the town meeting, uh, the, the, the half dozen or eight that were presented on the, what you emailed us, not any more. Is that correct? It was a little more than that. I think it was 10. Um, yes, it's just what, Al, what is in the application and it's for $18,000. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Andy. Um, Susan, thanks for coming to the meeting tonight. Um, I hope that you will consider uh, getting your samplers preserved uh, if this project goes well, and that it'll be the first of uh, many times the CPA can help out the Porter Phelps Huntington House in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. We have probably bigger projects going forward, so <laughs> we're hoping that we might have help with those. Since, acquire, since acquiring Phelps Farm. Other comments? Um, I did talk with Stuart um, Saginar today from the um, State Coalition, the Massachusetts Co Community Preservation Coalition. And he was on vacation last week. And, and so he was very nice to call um, before our meeting. And his his comment on this was, um, you, you know, he said some historical societies you, you do things and then you never get to see them. And I, I told them that the Historical Society does have a regular open houses um, and they also are available by appointment, but the public, you know, the public puts the money into these, you know, certainly want the public to be able to see them. And I told them about the, the April 23rd event as well. Um, and we thought it was a good project as well. And I certainly, I feel it's a good project. Thank any, you. Any other comments? I, I would just say that if anybody in town um, has samplers from the community, they should donate them to the Hadley Historical Society. Or at least bring them in April 23rd and Lynn Anderson, who's the expert, will um, evaluate. I think that's different from appraise, but I think evaluate in terms of what she's looking at. So that's, that's a nice opportunity. Um, 
All right, if we're ready to vote, all those in favor of approving the application as presented by the Hadley Historical Society for 18,000. Um, and I wanna say, not approving, I wanna say recommending. That's really the, that's really the language that we are doing is recommending. Um, that was Seven, zero, any, zero. any opposed, any abstain. So we're still at, we're at seven zero zero. The next application is the Lake Warner Lake, the Warner Lake Management Plan development um, for nineteen thousand five hundred, which is part of a twenty six thousand and some larger price tag. And we have Brian Pearson here today, um, which is great. Um, before we start discussion, does somebody want to make a motion to um, recommend this project, this application? I so move. Edwin? Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay. Comments? Um, motion to back recommend as well, as, but... That's a motion to recommend as submitted? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep, for the nineteen thousand five hundred. Uh, from from which from which bushel basket are we taking it out of? It's recreation. This is out of um, recreation. Yep, open space isn't really for rehabilitation, but rec recreation is, um, and that's really there's more there's more involved in the the feasibility study than, than what CPA covers, but the friends are paying for quite a bit of the study as well. Right. Um, I do have a, 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 a quick question about the uh, application. I was checking with a few people around town and um, I guess the question of CPA funds for use, I mean, first of all, I appreciate all the work that's going on up there and spent a lot of time uh, near that pond and, uh, um, you know, know that during the uh, heat of the summer, it can get pretty thick uh, out there and I'd like to see some of that reversed. But the, the question, of course, is CPA, use of CPA funds, what might be construed as an environmental cleanup. And I didn't get a chance to dig much into that. I don't know if anybody else has any any uh, uh, thoughts on that. I mean, you know, rehabilitation of buildings, you know, that's a little bit more tangible. Uh, you yeah, know, we've done, uh, you know, dams and you know, paid, paid, paid to help save that. Buildings, church steeples, um, environmental cleanup. I, I, I'm wondering, uh, you know, the uh, how applicable this really is. Well, this is this is for a management plan, correct? Right. This is what needs to be done to get the the correct. Lake. Yes, there there are no funds going towards cleanup of the lake. Um, okay. In terms of what we're asking for, it it would be to develop a plan. Um, one of the questions that was brought up last time was what kind of information we would be getting from the testing, and I asked our consultants and um, in the budget, we don't have um, what's called the toxicity profile, which is what's required for the 401 environmental cleanup application. And they provided a price for that of uh, 1,275. If we wanted to add that in, I didn't know if there's a possibility to amend our amount requested, but that was something that was asked by the committee. And I don't know, given this specific question, it might be worth it. I also reviewed it with um, Jason Johnson, who's worked closely on a lot of the watershed issues. And he thought, um, you know, um, having the test done would be a good thing to have the information about what's in there, not necessarily, um, for you know the the lake to fund it, but it it's a community project. It's always been a watershed project, like I mentioned, and it's in our report. We've worked with a lot of different organizations, um, state, local, towns, neighboring towns, um, and conservation organizations. And you know, it, the more detailed our management plan can be, the more capable we are in providing the correct solutions. 
um, if it is a cleanup type solution. Um, so that, you know, that's something that we could potentially add into our report, which would be, you know, additional benefit to the community to know what exactly is in the bottom of Lake Warner, um, given, you know, that it's been there at the bottom of the watershed for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Are you asking for an additional $1,200 on top of uh, what was already asked in 19.5? If that is allowed in the process, I, you know, I'm happy to update our, our. I don't know where we as a committee are supposed to vote on re recommending to town meeting what is applied for. Okay. I mean, it's, it's something that you could consider uh, amending on town meeting floor too, if you have that in writing. We we can amend it here though, Edwin. I, I, we can? I think I disagree. Yeah, we can. Okay. We can. Increase or decrease or limit or expand. Um, what if was we the get the for? Feel it's it's appropriate. Um, <laughs> it's it's. Um, hold on, I can give you the exact um, name here, but it's it's basically a um, specific test. It's called the four hundred one water quality certification soil panel um, that's required um, for any sort of disposal related to dredging, which you would want to do potentially based on what you find in the testing. Um, and the other the other question that was brought up as well is um, if our management plan will identify potential sources um, and our consultants at SWCA said they have quite a number of uh, channels for funding for this type of thing if it you know results in needing cleanup of whatever and, and Jason also mentioned you know there is a lot of opportunity to work with uh, DEP and Fish and Wildlife and UMass and you know this, this would be a very collaborative effort you know it um, you know I can't predict what we might come back here and ask for but um, you know there are other organizations that are interested in this as well and I think if we're taking a leadership position and presenting a plan, then it's easier for us to ask for partners to come help us. And so how will this work if it gets done affect people's ability to enjoy and, and you know, recreate on the, the lake? I guess that's, you know, this is a um, recreation. So that's. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as Andy mentioned, Andy Klopaki, is it? Sorry. Um, it, he mentioned, uh, you know, that there's a lot of buildup in, in July and August and September. And, you know, it, it's kind of yucky <laughs> to go out there and paddle around. So it makes it a more pleasant experience. But, you know, the, we also talked at the last meeting about the public health issues and, you know, cyanobacteria, um, E. coli, um, you know, and people can actually get sick um, we, under specific conditions that could potentially present themselves in the lake. The lake has been shut down in the past by the Board of Public Health in Hadley. So, you know, those types of things mean that the water is unsafe, that you can't recreate in it. So, um, you know, having having a means to address those issues going forward is um, a great use of the resources from the town to make uh, this open space more enjoyable and safer. Were there other questions? Yeah, I've got my hand raised, I think. Mark, oh, you probably do. I do better um, with your actual hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to ask Mary if uh, you had any feedback from Stuart in Boston on this. And I, I, yeah, I, the feedback I got, first of all, one question that was asked last week was, who owns the water, so to speak. And I did talk with Dan in the assessor's office and he said, the abutters don't own the water. They own, you know, the land um, that's above the water, but not the water. And um, he thought the water rights were either friends of Lake Warner or Kestrel. And I talked with the director at Kestrel and she said, all the water rights were transferred to the friends. So they're the ones asking for the project and they are the ones that have the water rights. Stuart um, wanted to be sure it was for recreation. It, it wouldn't be used for open space, but for recreation. 
Um, and he said, again, the, it's a broad study, but enough of it would cover things that were important for recreation that he was glad that we, CPA wasn't being asked to fund the whole study because um, some of it is beyond, you know, the, what the normal maintenance would be and stuff like that is outside of um, CPA. Um, his concern was the public access. He said, you know, if CPA funds are used for the lake, he, he said, who owns the land, land where like the boat ramp is? And if it's the friends, you know, would they consider perhaps a conservation restriction so that it was always guaranteed public access? And so um, that's a question to Brian on the, when people access the lake, is there a public way to do it or is it through land that the friend zone or is it a private land? Well, there is a boat ramp there and uh, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it is owned by the town. Um, but I'd have to double check on that. I don't know if Andy Morris Friedman knows more about that than I do, um, but I would have to check on that. Um, and then we do have the peninsula, the 5.6 acres that it is in, um, conservation restriction. I think the town actually holds the deed to the restriction, um, okay. at this point. So it has, I don't know if that means that it's town access, but it's, you know, the, they're the deed holders of our land or the conservation restriction on our land, um, and it's always, you know, my understanding that the, it's open to the public. You know, we publish it as, uh, uh, you know, conservation land that people can explore. Um, there, um, there is carry-in access for boats, and there is a small place there to put your boat in. Um, so, you know, we promote access to the lake through our land, and um, I'd have to check, but I think the the ramp is actually a town ramp that is public access. So that was it. That was his feedback. Was um, a was Andy has a question. Andy Morris Friedman. I see. Oh, name. actually, I'm not participating in the discussion because because oh, my, my wife's on the board. Oh, oh, I was just asking Andy if you knew anything about the ownership of the boat ramp from your prior. Oh moment. yeah, I think that's a town right away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Town right away. And of course, okay. there used to be access through. Uh, the uh, playing field at North Hadley Hall, but not since it was sold. Right. Um. So at this point, um, how do people feel about the 20,700 being what we're voting on? That's including, uh, that's including the 1,200? Right. Okay. I would approve, uh, I would move that we bring to town meeting the development for the 19.5. That's what I would do because that was on the original application. That's all. So I think for proper order, I think what you, you since you already moved and we had a second, you are, um, you are proposing to not amend your original motion to include $1,200. Correct. Correct. So if we want to discuss up or down on amending it for the $1,200? Is that where we are, Mary? Sure. I, so I'll, I don't think I don't we know. can vote to not amend a, a motion, but okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we amend um, the application to 20,700. And then we can so vote positively. This report, or since it sounds negative. like it's an important it's important in terms of is it what needs to be done to make it safe for people to really recreate there. Um, okay. So we're going to vote. Well, we need a second. Uh, I would second the motion as you did to amend Edwin's original motion to add the $1,200 and then we can discuss and vote on the amendment. Right. So we're we have that we're discussing the amendment. Does there anyone have any else they uh, anything else they'd like to add? So um well um just for clarification Brian you said uh, I think I wrote down that you said it is 
uh, water quality certification that is needed before dredging, but we're that's so or it, it, that, it's only benefit. Um, no, I mean it would give a general uh, overview of of what is in the soil there, and you know it is a a requirement if you are doing dredging. Um, but it would also potentially be a, a requirement if you're doing, let's say we want to do um, removal of invasive species and that requires mowing or excessive uh, turbidity in the water, that it might also require a 401 uh, water quality test in that application. So it, it has broader application than just the dredging. I think it will provide good general knowledge for the community about what's in the bottom of the lake based on 350 years of being um, part of a, an industrial area. Um, and then, you know, we can make be better informed decisions going forward. All right. So are they doing a form of core sampling of the uh, sediment? That's how you would do that. Yes, it's a sediment sample. And we would be doing other sediment samples, but this one is very specific for toxicities, um, heavy metals, that sort of thing. Um, I don't have the exact specification, Andy, but I can get more information if you'd like. So how do we proceed now, Mary? We vote um, on the if, article as amended? Right. If there's, if there's no other question, to do, then we vote on... Uh, presenting it as amended to town meeting, correct? Right. If if it is approved, then that's what we're recommending is the twenty thousand seven hundred. Right. If it's not approved, then we go back to voting on the original um, motion. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of approve of recommending twenty thousand seven hundred for the Lake Warner. Um, feasibility study, raise your hand. So one, two, three, four, five. All those opposed? And five, and one and one. And all those abstain. So we have five, one, and one. So the amendment carries. So that, that ends our voting on this, correct? I think so. Yeah. I think you just voted to uh, add the amendment. Do we now right. have to vote? vote now to we have to vote on whether or not we're going to oh, okay. recommend it. Sure. Correct. Right. Okay. Any other discussion? For that's for the amendment. So all those in favor of approving the um, the amended motion or the the amended amount, which is to approve the Lake Warner feasibility land management plan development. Um, at 20,700. If you're in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. All those opposed? One. And all those abstain? One. And it was Edwin that was no, and Andy Morris Friedman abstained. Yep. So. Correct. And, and now, Mary, is, uh, are we going to have their? Uh, uh, Two years, you got to use the money with, uh, up within a period of time? Yes. Yep. Thank you. On yep. even uh, on this motion and the one before it on the samplers? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. And just open. Um, Are you familiar with that sunset? I reviewed it with Mary, I think, in our initial conversation. So, I, you know, I, the the plan is to have our, our lake management plan done this year. So I don't think there's any Good. issues with us not getting our work done. Good. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. All right. Let me share my screen again. Oops. Are we done with Brian? I just wanted, here's the... Um, a draft for the Lake Warner study. And again, this goes before um, the administration and before the legal. So it, it often can change, but to see if town, if the town will vote to transfer 20,700 from the Community Preservation Act open space fund to the Friends of Lake Warner 
for improving for a study to develop a long range management plan to preserve, protect and manage the lake. Said funds to be expended under the direction of the town administrator within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unspent funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Okay, good, thank you. And the same hey, with the I, samplers. Uh, Mary? There, yeah? Uh, can I make a, a comment? Yes. Uh, the second line, it says Lake Water for improving for a study. Okay. So take out for improving. Yeah. For a study to develop a long range. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thank I'm very you. impressed you got these written up before the meeting. Well, it's easier to have your guys' feedback than try to do it after. <laughs> and the samplers are 18000 from the historic fund to the Hadley Historic Society for restoration and preservation of 10 historic needlepoint samplers from the late 18th to early 19th century. And again, under the town administrator within two years of the date of town meeting. Thank you. So there's Excellent. okay. Um, next we have the historical oh, so, commission. Go so are ahead. we done with Brian? Brian? Yes, Brian. Yes, go ahead, Brian. So do you need an amended uh, application or anything with the changed modified amount, or that's taken care of? I think it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, into it where it said um, finance committee and select board recommendation and. Um, do you recommend that we present this to those bodies? So that usually isn't how, usually um, whether they recommend it or not, it will be on the town warrant because it the CPA recommended it. Right. But they they go through and look at all the warrants and vote on them. Um, I You could ask the town administrator or the finance, but I don't believe that usually people present it to them as well. Um, oh, they just will review it uh, based on your recommendation and vote. Okay. Well, they, so no, they, can, <laughs> they don't have to agree with us at all. It's their, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, other people have other comments on that. Um, well, uh, it might help you. Okay. You know, to at least talk to them beforehand. Sounds yeah. good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks good for joining us, Brian. Good thanks night. for applying. Mary? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mary. Yes, who said that? Mary, this is Al Weinberg. Oh, hi, Alan. I, I'm, I'm joining by phone. I can't get on a computer down here in Florida. Right. We oh. did We did approve the samplers. Oh, okay. Good. Great. I just wanted to check on that to see if there's any more questions. No. Thank you very much for checking in. I appreciate but, it. Okay. Thank you, folks, for uh, supporting it. And uh, we'll see you at town meeting. Good, thank you. Alan, thank you. How's, the, Alan how's the weather down there? <laughs> better, better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take care, folks. I got to sign off. All, All right. right. Thank Alan. you, Alan. Yep. So now we have the historical information signs, the West Street walking tour, and the Hadley History audio driving tour, um, asking for 15000 of the $15,300 um, price tag. And um, in case all of you didn't hear when I mentioned it, um, Denise Barstow Mans is not able to join us tonight, and Diana West is here in her place. Denise asked that Diana be the representative for the Historical Commission. So, um, do we have a motion to? We'll start with a motion to um, recommend this um, this project. I would move that we uh, recommend. It as submitted. Second. Annual. Term. I would second that. Marisa. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Andy Morris Friedman. Um, I thought we had a good. Uh, discussion two weeks ago about the the content of the signs and the type of history that it's presenting and i wondered if you had any thoughts about that or if you're just planning to go ahead with uh, how it was presented well, let's go with that, how it was presented this is a question to diana yeah hi this is diana west i i would be happy to create a fifth sign um 
I just, I wonder at this point in the game, as that would require additional approval, I think I'd have to go back to the planning board and I'd probably have to go back to the group in Northampton that um, did a study on the proper locations of where to put these signs to determine the fifth location um, as there's, there's rules about floodplains and all that kind of stuff and making sure that there is sight lines when driving. Um, so I can amend it. I would not be opposed to that, but I'm thinking that perhaps that would be a part two of this project down the road where I would come back, where we would come back and ask for additional right. monies once we've done further studies on right. the appropriate location and getting the appropriate approvals. Okay, glad to hear it. I, I do want to mention um, this is a stretch for the CPA. The um, coalition guidelines say in general, a rule of thumb is that CPA fund can fund projects that deal with tangible historic resources, but not with historic interpretation, education, or heightening awareness of history. For example, using CPA funds to hire a videographer to film oral histories of members of a community would not be allowed. They're, they're kind of packaging this with re-updating the walking tour of um, West Street. Um, and it's, you know, they they're, have a lot of town approval. With, they've been before various boards. Um, they have limited other choices. Um, so it's, it's um, I, I do just feel like I should mention that. Um, mm -hmm. But... Um, Thank you. Any other discussion? Hmm. Thank God. Uh, do we know what what bushel basket this is coming out of? This would be historic. Thank you. I think we've seen uh, other communities use CPA funds for similar types of projects, yep. and the world has not ended. Yeah. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't put history out for people to see it, then they'll never learn it. Um, so I think this is a worthwhile uh, worthwhile project and should be supported, even though it might be out of the traditional CPA lane for funding. I, you certainly have put a lot, your committee is, commission has put a lot of work into this. It's really, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I will just say that, you know, it, I know it falls under interpretation and it falls under create, but we are helping to preserve the tangible historical resources in the town. And as Andy pointed out, like we need to get this information in front of people's faces. Otherwise they, they just won't be able to learn about it and know the rich history we have here in Hadley and, and know more about these tangible historic resources that they drive by or walk by every day. Good, thank you. Any other comments or? Yeah, I mean, I I acknowledge the uh, advice that you got from Stuart and, and that this is a stretch. Um, I would see it personally as us overriding the fact that the town is only funding them with $300 a year. Right. We're basically helping them do the things that I think the town budget should do. Um, so I'm in support. Thank Any you. other comments before we vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, say aye or raise your aye. hand. Mm -hmm. All those opposed? All those abstain. Mm -hmm. So One we abstain. have six, zero, and then Edwin for abstain. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next one is the Russell School, and um, we've got Dan Regish here and Courtney Meyer. Welcome. Um, and I just, I want to, before we um, start making motions and stuff, I wanted to just give a little feedback, if that's appropriate. Um, as to what some of our options might be with this. Um, I've spent a bit of time talking with people about this since our last meeting, um, Gary Berg at 
DPW director and with Courtney and with Dan and with um, Carolyn Brennan and, and with some others um, just to try to see um, how, how we want CPA to fit in well with what the rest of the town's plans are and, and also um, making sure that, you know, we're, the application is, is the timing is right. The application is appropriate. Um, it, you know, they had to rush to get it to us. And, and, you know, I asked Gary Berg and Carolyn Brennan, you know, who were listed as contacts and would ultimately be pretty responsible for if this were approved for moving it forward, if they felt it was ready with the application we received. And they both had concerns about, um, the scope of the work being detailed enough to put it out to bid, concerns about, you know, as, as much work as Courtney and Dan and their committee has put into it and their expertise, we certainly recognize, um, you know, is it, should it have more, should it be brought up to current and codes? There was questions on, is the seismic, um, seismic codes required or not? Um, and also, are you know who should be bringing this forward to the CPA committee? You know, should it be? Should, are they the right um, ad hoc committee to be bringing this forward? And my understanding is that the they're going to meet on Wednesday with a select board to review. You know, kind of what their charge is in terms of the school. And I I I'm not sure I want to vote on something now that um, that might not be lined up. Carolyn, you know, a lot of questions was what, well, what will the end use be? People would want to know what the end use of the building would be. And, you know, the, right now the building is minimally, they put, I think the budget is $350 um, plus minimal insurance a year. Um, and if this gets done, then that obviously will have to increase in the cost. And that involves the budget and the finance and um, making sure it's, it, it meshes, I guess, you know, I don't, I want to make sure that what we're doing is meshing well with what the town's plans are. And certainly it's the town people in town and it's a beautiful building. I want, you know, I'm hoping something might be able to be done. Um, and, you know, I can share Stuart's concerns and, and comments as well, but, um, and Courtney, you know, worked very quickly and contacted Mohawk um, who had done the study in 2013 and, they said for $8,400, they could update their report to bring it to current figures and, and also prioritize the work to be done. Um, Linda Sanderson nicely had chimed in and, and said that, that those types of funds could be paid out of the administration administrative amount that the CPA fund gets every year. But we don't, we haven't asked for that type of money. Um, but we could, you know, to be able to fund the study and not, you know, just to bring that up to date. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of options. One is to recommend it as it's presented. One is to not. One is to look at, you know, another feasibility study of 8,400 or or a different type of study. Um, but I'm, I, one thing I, I would, thinking about this, I wondered about what about we, you know, have a short meeting in a month from now on March 27th, give Courtney and Dan time to communicate with um, the, with Carolyn Brennan that, you know, in the select board and, and um, see, give them a little more time just to, to have this mesh with, you know, thinking about where, where this would get us to be. And, um, you know, part of that is, are you willing to do that? And, and Courtney and Dan, does that sound like a good um, solution for now? I mean, it's it's just giving them a little more time to be able to see how this all fits together. It's a lot of money. It's an important building. Certainly want to present something at town meeting that, that will make sense to a lot of people. Um, so for me, um, that seems fair. Um, we're happy to pull together anything that uh, you think or the town thinks makes sense. Um, and I'm free on March 27th. 
what do other what do other committee members think? Um, well, I um, excuse me that I'm I'm buried in my truck right now uh, trying to get it back together for a snowstorm. <laughs> Still several yeah. hours left of work to do there, but um, you know, f- for me, I I can't. Um, say how important this is to to um, have the proper amount of funds appropriated for such uh, a, a, an important project that you know is is in it. You know, this has become a, a, a moment in time that we have to take advantage of. The work really has to get done over this summer, or at least some repair work. You know, some serious money put into at least repairing the roof, which can be done. It would cost more than, you know, it would to repair the Goodwin roof at this point. The Goodwin slate roof is well-maintained. This one's going to take a little more work. It's going to take a little more than $8,000 or $9,000, whatever we had appropriated last time we, you know, the CPA gave money to Russell School. Um, so, you know, that being said, is um, you know, as, as much as it's a... Um, a big ask, and it may seem like um, the the numbers are iffy, but that's just not the fact. You're going to need some serious ducats to do the work, and you're going to need it quick um, before a uh, real damage starts to happen. There are active leaks now um, that have been not dealt with and not reported, um, and they, you know, you really need, you know, before you know, 10 years ago when we did this, there was, there was no leaks. There was a couple of spots where Gary had put some circles and, you know, that's not the case anymore. When we do get rain, we're lucky it's been a a dry winter, but when we do get rain, that's going to take on more and more water. Time is of the essence now as the building right now is extremely strong. Um, But if it, if it goes through another winter um, without proper, you know, a, a really good, you know, bunch of, um, effort put into it, um, you know, it's going to start to go downhill rapidly. Um, you know, how the, the CPA committee uh, would see uh, fit to augment uh, the, uh, the numbers somehow, you know, to me, yes, you're going to have to spend money one way or the other. Um, even to sell it, it costs, you know, it costs us money <laughs> to sell North Hadley Village Hall, you know, <laughs> It's, you know, we really got to think seriously about saving the building as a town structure for now. Um, you know, I, I, I realize that there are people in town hall that do not want to see the project go any farther. They want the building to come down. Of course, they're going to say they're going to do anything they, they can to, you know, to stop any kind of money and, you know, any kind of progress, even if it's planning. Um, you know, to keep from spending money in that school. And I, I, I have a hard time um, believing that, uh, you know, money put into that building wouldn't be, you know, a really great asset to the building, to, to the community in the future. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of a kind. Um, and at this point in time, it's this summer or never. It really needs some, you know, 8,500 bucks for another study, Sure, it's going to cost you all summer long before you know anything really comes, and then you have to go to town meeting again to get the money. It's going to be it's going to be another empty winter there without the proper maintenance. So, you know, I hope you know I'm willing to to spend you know another few days to try to get more you know put together, um, you know whatever we can do to patch up you know mend up uh, the the you know the the communication we got gap we have um, between the committees and the, you know, we need some healing here. We, this is a very critical moment for this building and for this town. Um, you know, I, I, I would encourage the, the uh, CPA committee to, to, um, you know, not to think this is a, you know, we're making some, we're, we're not some kind of rogue spendthrift committee trying to spend money on a listing old, you know, uh, tobacco barn out in the field. This is a really strong building. It's still standing very strong. We have an opportunity now. Um, you know, I can't tell town hall what to do and I can't tell CPA what to do. Um, 
And yeah, we want, you know, we want you to be able to succeed. That CPA tries to be able to help people, you know, preserve things and make them available for town use. Just, you know, having, having the, you know, Gary Berg, who's in charge of the maintenance of buildings and Carolyn both say they don't feel this is the information is there that's needed for them to, you know, Carolyn to put it out to bid and, um, and some of the questions that are still there and, and even who has the authority to be asking for this in terms of who, who would be, you know, overseeing it. Um, and that's, you know, well, that's the scary thing for me is that, you know, Gary, who I know is not in favor of saving a building anymore. And Carolyn, um, I don't, you know, I don't know whether or not she has any attachment to that building. Um, so, I, and the, you know, the fact being Courtney doesn't have any attachment to that building either. You know, she, she's just the person working to save it. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I expect there to be some pushback. Um, but I, I, I really think in my opinion, it's irresponsible to, to act, you know, we've done the survey and we've put, we've given them finally what they wanted was an, an honest, true survey from the residents in this town, what they think that should be done with the building. And I understand that they have, you know, a, you know, different, <laughs> you know, a different plan. Um, but this is, I'm just trying to do what the town wants. And I know it's a majority of people in town would like to save that building and not, you know, not see it wait for yet another plan to be paid for. We paid for the old Mohawk. We paid for the DRA. I've spent the last, well, it's, it's been, been eight years on this municipal building committee trying to save that building. And I, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of our community and, you know, I, I pay taxes in this town for a reason because I believe in what we're doing here. And it's really, you know, it doesn't make any sense for me to, to, to uh, go backwards. You've spent all this time and effort to go forward and build new buildings and, and do right by this town. And this is one of those things that doing right by this town is to save this building and, and you know, it inspires us surrounding communities. This is how you do it right. We have a AAA bond rating. We have, you know, we're whatever the rating is. We, we are good <laughs> in this town and the surrounding towns know it. We have low taxes. We have a great uh, commercial uh, sector. We have a lot of people preserving land in town. Um, we're doing the right thing by the Lake Warner. We're doing so many things good. Why would you go backwards on this building? It does not make any sense. I, you know, I guess, you know, and I wish I had more time to prepare for this meeting and, um, and, you know, actually get some more of these numbers together. But I am really struggling to have my truck put back together because the <laughs> ladies need to come to the hair shop and get their hair done in the morning. And I want to make sure that happens and that, you know, they're, they're all safe. Absolutely. So, um, um, so good luck with the rest of the meeting. Um, I'll listen in, but um, I'll let you go with that. I know that you have your duties and, and you, know, you, you sort of have to listen to town hall, but those are my opinions. Thank you, Dan, very much. Thank you. Edwin? Yeah, um, I, was a, I was of the same opinion as Dan. Uh, we've done studies after studies after studies about this building, and let's either, excuse my English, but let's poop or get off the pot right now. And I would imagine that the, the, one, um, the question that I have is where would the money come from out of which – account would we borrow the money and uh borrowing the money i'm not in favor of period in the subject um if we have to adjust the to adjust the amount let's do that but i really am not in favor of uh, borrowing the money can you see the report again yep so we haven't voted on the potential clawbacks um, but they're the two here, which would give the potential balances yep. here that we discussed. If we were to approve all the, actually, this is now 20,700. 20, I'm going to not quite make that $1,200 change because I don't want to spend too much time doing it, but right. um, we would have, sorry, um, 
the, the well, actually, that's it's not a big change. This would come out at 20, um, 29,300 would be um, left in the open space set aside. Correct. And then all of the historic would be used and we wouldn't be using any of the housing. Um, there would need to be general reserve. We'd have to use a little bit of that right. 65,000 and we'd use all of the available general funds. So at the end of it, um, we would have 29,300 in open space. We'd have 258. We'd have 434 in reserves. And that, so we'd have an available balance of 722, um, but 258 of that is only for housing and 29,000 is only for open space. Um, okay. Um, we will get another 70,000 or so before town meeting. So that would be back up to 500, but we basically right. would be using up pretty much what we have if we were not to borrow at all. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, that I'm in favor of not borrowing money. I'm just, I don't, I don't like the idea and I don't like being in charge of the, not being in charge of the money. And Let's face it, I don't think that the general person, Linda Sanderson's a nice person. I agree with her 100%. But she, does she know how to, how to spend the money? I don't know. It, and is she going to be in the office a, after the election? Who knows? So I'm assuming that uh, let's just... Let's just uh, uh, appropriate the amount of money that this guy's asking for, and that's it. Mark that's Dunn? I to say. Um, so I was hoping that Dan or Courtney could remind us and any viewers that watch this tonight or later what exactly was in the funding request that they're asking for? Is it just for the work or are, have they included funds for a designer to put together um, legal bid documents that are required? Yeah. Yes, it was both for the bid docs and the work. Okay. So that's why that's so much money. And the thing yeah. is we over we would overestimate the, the bid docs because all of those activities were estimated separately as individual projects. So, in fact, if you combine four of those projects with what we did, our foundation work, uh, the, um, the, the unstable grading. grades on, 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 on the retaining walls and the roofing, and, you know, all of that stuff was combined. So uh, your thought costs would be, you know, I'm sure about half. But it's still going to be, you know, pricey. To you're absolutely right. It's going to take some money to, to you know, the, the thing is you have to incorporate a future, um, you know, the next step of stabilization. This is the initial stabilization, just to keep some water from coming in and stabilize this. Everybody's worried about the end use, and this is so not what this is. You know, the end use is probably going to be end up for town after after four six years of of stabilization effort the town will end up saying oh yeah this building is worth 60 million dollars you know so um <laughs> you know yes the uh, you're i'm sorry the the short answer to your question is yes the the, the soft costs were included and that's okay. why it, it's so much okay. thank you dan so with that said i i took some difference some issue with one of the uh, feedbacks you brought Mary you said that someone at the town said what is the in intended end use and I from what we discussed two weeks ago they don't know that I understood this as a Hail Mary attempt to keep the building alive so that that next step can happen that if we don't do this it's lost so if we my takeaway was if we don't fund this, basically the naysayers on the building win because it will it will deteriorate to the point that the argument will be stronger for tearing it down because it's getting too expensive to save. And if we Correct. put some money into it now, then we have the option to look at our asset and how best to, 
to use it down the line just to, you know, make the envelope um, self-sustaining. So um, at this point, I'm still in support and I will yield the floor. I think Andy had his hand up and then Risa. Diana. Go ahead, Andy Klopacki. Thank you. Uh, you know, first of all, I, again, uh, I spent a lot of time in that building committee with Dan trying to get money in the past to um, stabilize that building and do some basically patch repairs. And granted, any taxpayer dollars that we're spending, whether it be 8000 or $1.2 million, you know, those dollars are still um, uh, things that we should be paying attention to and being diligent with. And, um, but part of my concern, and uh, I'll, uh, I just want to express them all before I get an answer on it, but uh, part of the concern I have is that the, these numbers were calculated based off 2019 estimates. And we all know that, you know, this is a very different world as far as costs are concerned. Uh, regulatory uh, conditions have changed since 2019. And we also know that this building will trip code review uh, and these repairs will automatically force code review because it'll be going over 33% of its uh, assessed value at this time or $100,000. We'll hit that limit. So the, the building will need full code review and, and full code compliance prior to bringing it into service. And it's a, that's with the new stretch codes that are going to be put into place uh, July 1st of the coming summer, um, for commercial structures, it's going to be uh, quite a long way to get R30 in the walls, and, you know, beef up the structure and, you know, and we got to look at the realistic viewpoint of, you know, the, changing the interior of the building if we're going to be using it too. There's, there's, uh, I think the numbers that we saw from the 2019 iteration of the DRA report put us close to $20 million. Um, and that was to rehab it back then. Frankly, I'm, I'm concerned if we put money into these particular areas, is there some other thing that's going to be problematic, like the bell tower uh, or, or the, uh, the chimney on the inside? Uh, I mean, I, I walked by the bell tower and, and looked at the telltale gauges uh, just the past couple of days and on the north, uh, northeast corner. I mean, it's three sixteenths of a fracture in the, uh, in the three, four inch stone, uh, three inch stone that's up there. Um, so for doing a lot of things to stabilize other parts of the building, I'd hate to have a main part like the, uh, bell tower become, you know, uh, a, a safety issue and a collapse issue. I just want to make sure that, you know, if we're doing this, we got an engineer behind it who says the money you're putting into this building now is going to stabilize this thing, uh, to do what you're saying it's going to do to hold the envelope for the next five years, 10 years, while we figure out what we're going to do with it. To, again, put a lot of money into the, the roof and, and the foundation and then have, uh, you know, a portico pull away or the bell tower collapse or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, right. I mean, this it's a serious crap, a, a crack in the front. You've, you, you know, there's, there's, as you know, there's a lot of things that need to be done in that building. And ultimately, I mean, we've got to sprinkle it. you got to deal with bathrooms. And this is a big commitment for the town, uh, whether or not they're, you know, this could be considered a strategy if we're in for a penny, we're in for a pound. Um, but, you know, I, I think they realistically do have to look at the big picture and whether or not this is something want to, they want to proceed with. I understand that. And I am looking at the big picture. And I believe that that, you know, with the IEBC, um, it, you can't change the interior of that building much anyway so you're not going to spend much on the interior you will spend some on bathrooms but i'm willing to volunteer my expertise uh and and time to build you those bathrooms if you'd like um i don't mind doing that kind of stuff i'm, I'm not a roofer and i'm not going to do that roof but um as, as well as other donators i'm sure we can get you know we've had home depot donate to park and rec and uh, all their different things or Hadley fire department, everything you think they wouldn't want to have a sign on the front of that building saying, you know, project, you know, in cooperation with our, you know, of course they would, we're going to get, I, I think, you know, with, with more fundraising and, and more community spirit put into the building, um, those little things, um, you know, can, you know, can get done, uh, you know, the things we need done right away are big items. We need the roof done. We need the, you know, I'd love to have, uh, you know, 
uh, Robbie Adair go over there and do the the retaining walls and the, you know, some of our local guys could come over there and do some of that work too. Um, you, the you know, Dan, maybe it's too big. You know, but, this is going to trigger decam too. So there's, you know, there's even at these these dollar values, it's going to have to uh, fall in line with the state mandates. And, yeah, and, I've worked, I've done decam jobs, and I know what they require. I think that uh, you know they'd be proud to work with, with Hadley to you know, make this project, uh, you know, a reality and, you know, make it really I mean, set an example of how to do things right. Diane, I've seen you with your hand raised. And Risa, I'll get you. I know Risa put her hand up before mine, so I'll let yeah, her go. Risa, and then go ahead, I Risa, sorry. Follow her. Okay. Um, I need it very simple. So I, I look at it in that if we do not do something to to fix this building so that it can survive long enough until the town of Hadley decides we're just gonna end up with a pile of bricks and we're gonna it seems like to me that what this building could become uh would be something of great, great value, you know, histor the historical piece. Um, but, but also if Hadley decides to eventually, whatever, put town offices, decides to sell it or lease part of it out or whatever, it could be a moneymaker. But if we don't do this, this work now, we're going to end up with a pile of bricks that we have to pay to raise this building. I mean, it'll have to be raised if it falls apart. And that that has to be expensive, too. So I am in favor of this. I don't know all the politics behind it, uh, who wants it, who doesn't. But, but if we recommend this to town meeting, essentially it's the citizens of the town who will decide. Mm -hmm. on whether they want this building to go forward or not. And isn't that what we all want for the voters to decide? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the and ultimate another, decision is the voters. Um, thank you, Risa. That, that puts in perfectly what I was going to share about how, you know, this the history of trying to say this building goes back many years, as Dan said, I mean, that first survey that was done 10 years ago, and unfortunately, the town has a history of not preserving its historic buildings, as we saw with North Hadley Village Hall, as we saw with Hucker School. And I'm very afraid that that is the route we're headed on now, that we just keep pushing this down the road and it's going to get to the point where instead of being $1.2 million, it's $2.2 million. It's $2.2 million to raise it. It's expensive to raise a multi-story building like this. And for what? So we can get a parking lot? Yeah, I, I'm 100% with you. And, you know, the Historical Commission had this under our belt for some time. And we went to the select board with some ideas. We proposed creating a study group to do a local historic district so we could get more grant money. And they turned us down cold. They wouldn't even listen beyond a 10-minute presentation at a meeting. And they just kept saying, we need to know what the town wants. Well, you know, now we did this study committee and they did a survey and the town said they wanted to keep the building. And I think you're absolutely right. This needs to go before town meeting floor because these people we have elected, they're supposed to represent us and they're supposed to represent uh, our will. And, you know, town administrator, she works for the town and Gary Berg works for the town. And I think they need to hear what the town wants. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of work but it's going to be more money and more work down the road. And if we don't do it now, when? Thank you. Mark Dunn, you had the your other hand raised. I was going to speak to something that, that uh, Andy Klopacki mentioned, which concerned me because I don't know what the assessed value of the building is, but it sounds like it's extremely low because uh, I am familiar with 521 CMR, which is basically our state's version of the ADA. And it does say that if you spend more than 30% of the actual cash value of the building, um, that you do have to bring it up to complete code. 
So, but there are also exceptions on, you know, stabilization, roof, things like that. So some of this might be able to be excluded from that. But if, if the town has assessed the Russell School building at a very low rate, that's not equal to what it would cost to rebuild it, then we've done ourselves a disservice because we boxed ourselves into a corner where we can hardly spend anything on it without owning uh, an unrealistic, uh, you know, that's when you start to trigger that requirement to bring it into full compliance with you know, elevators and ramps and all that. So I, I and, and just before I turn it over to Edwin, I will say that in my earlier years, when I was not long after I got licensed, I, I had a project for the town of Lee and I was their architect and presented, helped present at their town meeting. It was just like this. Um, there were people screaming and yelling, we should tear town hall down and we need more parking in town. Now we preserved it. We got a community development block grant, you know, historical commission grant, and they take a lot of pride in their buildings. So I don't know that ours would necessarily go down that route, but we won't know if we don't. But again, if it's been assessed really low, then I think we may have been painted into a corner. I okay. haven't seen the assessment. Um, I don't know if Dan, you've seen it. No, and I, I would agree with that um, wholeheartedly. I would I would question why it would be assessed so low. Um, I, I absolutely agree. You do a, a, a incredible disservice to town by <laughs> assessing your own property uh, at a very you know very low. Um, I mean, it, you know, a couple of the points uh, that I meant to make. Um, you know, you, if, if the building doesn't, you know, if you don't start to fix up the building and you can't use it in the future, it has to come down or, you know, I can't imagine selling it because all, we've already went through the, the, the uh, studies of trying to, to sell it to developers. We put our RFPs out to developers. Um, even our best local developer said it's just not big. You know, the, the lot's not big enough. The building's not configured properly. It's not really usable for a, a developer. So if you don't put some money to start to fix it up so that you can use it for town offices, then you sort of doom your your uh, people in town hall to be eight feet from the center of that Route 9, where when, when you have those loud pipe cars and motorcycles and 18-wheelers and racing away from that intersection, the windows in that town hall rattle. And, you know, that's right next to your tax collector's office, right in your town administrator's office. All day they listen to that. And boy, how nice and quiet it is in that Russell School building. I think our, the future generations would really enjoy uh, spending time in that building rather than the, the, you know, the wooden town hall that, you know, we can't even get the, the, the columns painted properly. Come on, you know, that building's got, it needs to be fixed up too. And, you know, the reason we vacated the Russell School is so we could fix it up. We couldn't have those people in there while we were trying to fix it up. And, you know, as far as the, North Hadley Village Hall. Um, you ask Ricky and Joe, and they'll tell you the building's plenty strong. We don't need to put any serious work into it yet. I know they gutted it out, and I know there's some work to it, but you know it's it's a good strong building. It's, neither is that an old you know soggy listing tobacco barn out in the field. It's a good strong building. I'm glad they got ended up with it. Edwin. Yeah, let's let's just cut to the chase. Let's let's let the voters de decide whether or not we're gonna fund the fund this project, and that's it. Let's just drop it. And that's the first thing I want to say. And the second thing is, there's a lot of committees in town that don't need to be in town hall. They are in town hall now because there's no other place. So why can't they go to Russell School? And so what? You're gonna put a a, a, a handicap accessible accessible uh, lavatory in. So what? Big deal. You're gonna change how the building looks anyway. You're gonna put an elevator in. So what? Big deal. You're gonna change how the building looks. So you know what? Let's do it. Let's get off our butts and do something about it. And let's let the people decide. Thank you. 
Uh, and the other thing is, Mary, I, I, I will have to say I'm not in favor of borrowing money on a project such as this. Right. <laughs> Um, so are you, know, are you calling this to a vote so that no, we, we can haven't we haven't our... actually done a motion yet? So is this a good time for your five minute break or no? Andy, no. what is your Andy? Morris I think it's speech? I think it's a good time for a five minute break. Yeah. All right, let's and stretch. Then, then I'd like to join in the conversation, but first I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Well, you're the one, huh? <laughs> All right, it's um eight eighteen, so eight twenty three. First All right. Freeman, you're on. Um, uh, well, two quick things before my main point. I just want to uh, acknowledge the passion that people have for this uh, for this issue, and the frustration that those of us who want to save the building have felt over all these years. Um, and hope that this time we can actually take action that's going to save the building. Uh, and also, uh, Mary has put in an incredible number of hours on this project talking to people, probably more than any other CPA project that I can remember. And um, um, the three options that you gave us, I think really uh, should guide us when we decide which one we wanna do. And the one that I think gives the best chance of success to the project is to have, the, uh, have a third meeting and to give you guys one last, uh, hopefully not last, one more time to try to get people in town hall behind this project, mm -hmm. um, to uh, address their concerns if possible, um, and to get them to support it. Because if they don't, it probably won't happen even if town meeting votes yes. Um, so if this really is the last, uh, the bottom of the ninth inning for this building, then we really have to get the politics right as well and build the consensus uh, to save the building, to do these temporary emergency measures to save the building um, and to get people to come to the meeting and vote yes. So, um, if we thought that the request was too much, maybe we could just pass the part to fix the roof. Um, maybe we think everything is critical and we will pass it, uh, you know, uh, as it was presented. Um, but I think with another month to polish the proposal, to increase the level of detail and to try to get town hall behind it, I think it's worth uh, waiting one more month. I think it will increase the likelihood that we get a positive town meeting vote and that the project is actually started, which would be a nice change. Oh, and I agree with Edwin about the borrowing. <laughs> I think we should just pay for it straight because uh, if we borrow the money, then it's a two thirds vote at town meeting and that's gonna be really tough. Right. If we don't borrow the money, it's just 50% plus one, which is a lot easier. I would love to see the building preserved. I want to want to try to give it the most chance that it can. Um, and you know, I you know, will there be an OPM? Will there be um, you know? The Goodwin took a while because they didn't quite have what they needed to get the bid out. And you know, how fast would that all happen? So it's. I, I, I like waiting a month too, not as a way to say no or yes, just as a way to say, let's try to make a recommendation that has the best chance to succeed. Um, but it's, I'm, you know, it's, an, we're a nine member tonight, a seven member committee. So it's, it's how the committee um, votes. So I think at this point, unless people have more comments, we need a motion either to accept the proposal or a motion. I, I don't know if we need a motion to continue it a month, um, but would- Let's just make it stronger and let's just uh, uh, let's just have a motion to continue till March 27th. Is that the date? March 27th is four weeks from now, which, you know, I, I asked Carolyn if we were to do that, would that still be enough time to get it on the warrant? And 
It would, you know, it would. Okay. Just, so just, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we postpone the vote on the Russell School stabilization for $1.236 million um, until uh, March 27th and let, and that's it. That's my motion. I'll second that. Thank you, Andy. Any discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, zero, seven, and zero. zero, zero. Well, thank you all for agreeing to another meeting. Um, um, is that going to be the only thing on the agenda at that time? I'll answer that at the end of this meeting because we still have a bit to go through. <laughs> okay, very we may, good. We may have some of that still to do, but um, right. Thank you so much. So I'll be in touch with you, Mary, and make sure that we collect everything that uh, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very Thank you. welcome. Thank, Thank you, you and Dan, much. for all your work Thank you, Dan. the committee. Thank you, Dan. And good Thank luck with everyone. the uh, and good luck at the big meeting for town hall. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Good luck with the truck tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the plowing tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Be there. Um, Ladies get their hair done tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next thing on here is projects about to expire. Um, and I'm going to pull this up again. Mm-hmm. Here's our outstanding projects. Um, most of them are within their time allotted. The ones in red are the ones that have come up. Um, so the water testing was first approved in 2020 um, annual town meeting, and we extended it last year for another year. Um, they still have not spent the money. Um, that was to apparently do additional water testing over what they had. I did email. Um, out in January asking for feedback, and I really didn't hear any one way or the other. Um, okay. So they're not, they're not, they're obviously aren't going to use the money. So, you know, they, uh, how, how much, how long can we bend over for these people? And let's just, and it's not a huge sum of money. So let's just take it back. Well, what, what we do at this point, if we're not voting to extend it, is we just let it run out. And okay. then at the October meeting, or in the fall, at our meetings in the fall, it'll have expired. So then we can take a clot back then. Okay, very good. And then the next one is the Goodwin study phase two, which was 25000 for um, the elevator. Mm -hmm. And that... Um, similar scenario in that it was 2020 and we last year we extended it for one year. I did talk to um, both Tim Nyhart and Jennifer um, James about that and it sounds like that's actually very close to being sent out to bid and um, we'll they would that. like us to extend that. Um, okay. And they still are working on the rest of the Goodwin repairs, which again, they've put a lot of effort into the bid package and that's ready to go out very shortly as well. But we gave that a two-year extension, so it's not up now. Um, mm -hmm. Does anyone want to make a motion to extend the um, Goodwin study phase two? Mark, you'll make a motion. Any seconds? I'll second it. Edwin, yep. any other discussion? Nope. Do we want to do uh, one year or two years for the extension? What do you think, Mark? Some precedence. Well, the precedence is usually one year, except last yeah. year for the big project, we did two because it, it is a big project and it was still. Let's do one year. Well, that was in excess of a million dollars overall, right? I know we had yeah. 750 in it, but uh, right. that was a big. No, no, that's the Goodwin was 230000 Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about another project we extended. Yeah. Yeah, so if we, if we extend it a year, we can always extend it again next year. Right, we sure. We've already right. extended it once, but hopefully if it does go out shortly, it won't even be an issue. So right. I move to extend it one year, and uh, do you second. second that, Edwin? Okay. Yep. All right. 
Um, so elevator one year. And then the other one um, is for the clock. Right. Oh, we already voted on the clock restoration. So that, that's all we need. So on the good ones, sorry. And all those in favor of extending it one year, please say aye. 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 So that's um, all six. opposed. Any abstain? Is that a seven zero zero? Seven. Yeah, seven. Okay. And then the clawbacks. Um, we've got the North Hadley Cemetery work is done. There's still um, twenty nine thousand five hundred fifty in that was set aside and not used. Um, and that is, according to Alan Weinberg, the bills have been paid. That is additional that can be clawed back. Fine. So let's let's do it. All right. Um, I'll, I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 So, any opposed? Any abstain? So that's seven zero zero. And the library mural restoration is not up yet, but the project is done. There's still forty dollars, <laughs> so that ad that additional can be clawed back as well. Um, Fine. I move we claw back the library mural restoration. Larissa, you second? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right. Who was the second? Edwin made the motion. Who seconded? Risa. Risa. Okay. Did. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, good. Order. Hey, Mary, what would you think of uh, sending a subtle hint to the next batch of project projects that might need extensions to... Uh, um, let's go, let's take a quick what's look. Going on. I usually send it out a few months ahead. Yeah. Um, which one? So just to go back to... The first one we talked about was the water testing and we didn't go to a vote because no one was a proponent of extending it. So we're just gonna let that expire. Is that right? Correct. That's right. And then the other three we did vote on and we approved them unanimously to extend them. Okay. And they're all well, here? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, we're one's an extension and two are clawbacks. Two, cl right. two are clawbacks. Right, right, right. 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 Okay, sorry. Nope, that's fine. So we have the town pillars, um, the library windows, they had asked for, they have till the fall. They needed, they had one other thing they wanted to do with that. Um, the Goodwin repairs is hopefully out for bid finally after many hours of the bid package trying to be put together. Um, and certainly appreciate the work on all sides. Mm -hmm. um, the clock restoration we talked about already, the Hockenham project the fence project is in got stopped suspended because of cold weather and that'll be started up again when the weather allows mm -hmm. um the pillars um the golden court windows we we did get during their as per their grant agreement we did get a, a um update on that and that um they did some more testing, had some issues. They had to get some more money, which they had another source for, the housing authority. Um, and it actually went out for bid just before our last meeting. I saw it in the legal ads. So that's that's in process and hopefully will be done um, when the weather allows. But I can give you a little update on that. Sure, Risa. Uh, the, the bids have to be in by March the 8th. It'll take a couple of months for the winning better to fabricate the windows because they're all odd sizes they have to be fabricated nothing's off the shelf mm -hmm. and we're hoping uh that they'll be installed uh probably in june or so excellent the first church steeple is actively thank you risa, um, thank you, risa yeah. um, being worked on the west apr that's already all committed. It's just, I guess it, it just takes a while to <laughs> the checks Ooh. to actually get to that point. Um, 
And then the Hopkins Playing Fields has just started, though they, you know, has just been awarded in the fall, but I know they want to jump right into that. And then the Cemetery, Cemetery again is the same. So really the one that's um, really the one that might be dragging a little is the um, the town hall pillars and columns and and um, hopefully that I'm not quite sure where that is all at. Um, does that answer your question, Andy? Kind of yes, where, thank you. where things are at. All right. Um, so we have just a reminder. Um, we have a couple expiring in June. Um, myself is at large and Cassandra also. And if we want to continue, um, which I, I plan on contacting the select board. Um, I don't know what Cassandra's plans are, um, but we need to do that in the next few months. And, and Mark Dunn, if you're continuing on with the planning board representative, we just would need for the September meeting, uh, uh, or I'd need a, note, a letter just saying they, they've appointed you to be the representative, continue to be, and it's a three-year term. Okay. Um, Edwin um, has where Edwin has mentioned that he may um, be stopping soon, and, and yep. we certainly, if that happens, this is a great time to just acknowledge his many, many, many years on this committee and his love for the town and his good, good advice and thinking on so many projects. And well, thank um, you very much, Mary. I appreciate it. Well, it's been a pleasure being on here with you. And, and mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed our phone conversations. <laughs> Usually the the, meeting, I get a call. Are we ready? <laughs> Edwin's been the longest serving member on the CPA committee. And uh, it's really been a pleasure working with you and bouncing ideas off of you. And uh, thank you for your service to the town over these many years. Thank you, uh, Andy. Thank you very much. And uh, every time somebody asks, what does this mean? Uh, I think of you. <laughs> You're the one, huh? <laughs> okay, nice. Um, so question about CPA public hearing at, at um, in, our, in our bylaws, it says that we'll hold, oh, and I had it written down somewhere and now I'm not sure I'll find it real fast, but we'll hold um, informational meetings to talk about um, potential uses of CPA funds. And um, I'm just going to actually pull that up. Um, and I'm not sure if the CPA committee has ever actually had, like, a, I mean, it can be 10 minutes before a meeting starts is how a lot of, you know, other meetings seem to do it. And but it does need to be listed twice in the legal ads, which um, which I've seen other towns do. And other towns seem to really, what they put in is, um, you know, to discuss the applications before them, which, you know, makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways to get people's input or questions, but that doesn't seem to be what our, our bylaw doesn't say that. Um, it says more to discuss the potential uses of CPA funds. It isn't, it's more of a, a general. Um, and I don't know if public hearing notice. Um, all right. No, that's not it. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, if, if that's something we should. It doesn't say we have to do it yearly. It's not, it doesn't say annual. Um, I'm sorry, I was writing notes. I'm not sure I understood the beginning of this. Should we should we be putting in a having a public meeting a public comment period um, before one of our meetings? Oh, have a public comment before <laughs> the meeting starts. I see. Or some people do. Some towns do it separately, but. You know, I'm not sure we want to all get together for a real, you know, we may not have anyone even show up. Um, well, um, haven't we been, I mean, are you talking about in addition to the public that, you know, we address an application and then we, after the board has, after the committee members have spoken, we invite the 
the sponsors or the public to speak. So you're saying in addition to that? So, all right, here it is from the town. I found it from the town's bylaws. This is, this is part of what our bylaws have. The Community Preservation Committee shall study the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town regarding community preservation. The committee shall consult with existing municipal boards, including the appointing bodies, in conducting such studies. As part of its study, the committee shall hold one or more public informational hearings on the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town regarding community preservation possibilities and resources notice of which shall be posted publicly and published for each of two weeks preceding a hearing in a newspaper of general circulation in town. And I've been noticing towns doing this, but they don't say for the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town um, is really what the bylaws says the meeting should be about. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. It's probably well, 500 bucks to put in an ad yeah, let's just let's place. let's just let it go. If somebody wants it, then we'll have it. And then then how does how does that mix with the number eight on the agenda of the steering committee? Does okay. that, uh, Is that can, can we right. do both at the same time? We can. They're they're a little bit different, but um, okay. I'm you know I just wanted to bring it up because thank you. It's kind of there. Yes, Mark. I'm just wondering, and you can. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wondering if in the bylaw they didn't mention review applications, and that is that was their loose way of saying it. Because I feel like we're doing that in the course of reviewing these applications, mm -hmm. or or are they suggesting that we should be doing that in addition to reviewing applications for? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. I think it's an addition. Okay. All right. It's a public yeah, informational in, in, in the past, yeah. we've had the, you know, first 10 minutes of a particular meeting uh, be open to public comments. Oh, okay. And, and no one ever comes. Mm -hmm. Only the applicants. I, I, I think it might be interesting to have that um, before our voting sessions, if we have the informational session and the voting session. At least it's you're meeting that obligation and putting it out there. Before, you know, if people wanted to talk about, it, or at least say before we cover. I don't know if you want to have a public comment on all the uh, CPA um, proposals that are in place for that particular um, uh, warrant article. Like you know, tonight, if you were to have it, first ten minutes of this meeting be available for open public comment on some of these uh, warrant articles. Because I don't know if in this Zoom atmosphere, people feel that it's only the presenters, uh, you know, uh, and then the, the committee, if somebody wanted to make commentary on uh, what we're talking about with public. Um, I don't know, I didn't see any names on there that, um, on, on the Zoom meeting that, that chimed in, but I mean, that's one thought. And then the other one, of course, is the bigger picture of how to use CPA money. And, Maybe we put together a blurb for a town meeting at some point and say, you know, or promote, have the moderator promote it or something like that for a, a one, one minute read at town meeting. I've been trying at town meeting to, when we, what, to talk a little bit more about some of the issues when they, you know, like the bonding or the, you know, what it can be used for, but it's limited opportunity. Risa? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it's, to me, it sounds like two different things. Like every uh, public body like this one or any other boards we sit on, uh, they need to have a public comment section uh, published on the agenda. Like just e even if nobody ever shows up to comment uh, and that's separate from the applicants and their supporters, but you know, have a public comment section just on the agenda. But it sounds like the bylaws are talking about more of an outreach. Like, unless somebody had explained it to me, I wouldn't have known what community preservation was or what capacities it had. It sounds like to me the bylaws is, are talking about 
us going out into the community, holding a meeting to and inviting, you know, the public and organizations like the Historical Society, et cetera. This is what we can do for you, that kind of thing. This is how the process works. This is what we can do for you. It sounds like that's what the bylaws is talking about. Needs, possibilities, and resources of the town re regarding the community preservation possibilities. You know, the hard thing was with the 10 minute before a meeting, you have to post this two weeks before, which in our current timing is why I couldn't do it this time because I couldn't talk to you about it first. And, and you know, it, it's... Mm -hmm. Plus, again, there's probably $500 just to post, you know, 250 probably minimum each time you post. And so it's, you know, there's an, there's an expense to do it as well. And I think to do it before the first meeting, people won't know what even the, um, the applications are. So it would be before the voting meeting if we were to do it. But I don't, you know, I don't know if we want to do it every time just because, the timing and the cost and everything. Um, but is it is it saying we need to do this before our two months of meetings, you know, separated by six months or whatever it is? Or is it a general outreach thing where we're just doing education in the community so these various organizations will know that we exist and can help them? It is, it's very general. Mm. It, it's and and it hasn't been acted on um i just you know um did somebody have their hand raised for amf or yeah it sounds to me like we want to get uh town meeting to revise this bylaw so we don't have to spend 500 bucks a year to uh to uh, be in compliance <laughs> You know, it's actually off of the state bylaw. The state words it a little differently, but the state has it in there too for the public oh, meeting it's a state. For two weeks. And I, and all the legal ads that I've seen from the various towns around us, it's in there twice. Oh, um, then we can't. If it's state, we can't really do anything. Yeah, about it. yeah. I think okay. it's. It, yeah. You know. And do we have an administrative pot of funds that would pay? We do, that? and we haven't voted on how much to do that yet. Because I, I, and in fact, I'd like to put voting on the administrative part off till our next meeting in March, because one of the options was to pay that $8,400 for updating the study out of our administrative, uh, you know, it, it just seems like we can vote on that next time. There's still plenty of time for the town meeting warrant. Um, well, let's, let's, we can discuss this another time and just raising it. I'm not sure what the answer is and, and, um, I want to keep getting through a few more things and it's getting late. So steering committee of the Community Preservation Coalition, um, we have a representative that's been appointed and the only one in Western Mass. And so it's Andy Morris Friedman and I'd let, I'll let him describe a little bit more about what this is and a quick update. Okay, let me really try to be brief, but thorough. Um, the CPA Coalition, um, uh, used to be three people. Now they only have two employees in Boston. They're not part of the government. Um, they're paid by fees that town CPA committees pay. So they send us a bill and it's, what is it like $700 a year or something? 1750, like 1750. Oof, the price has really gone up. Um, but, uh, but it's worth it. Um, the the CPA co the, the CPA coalition has several missions to get the CPA passed in the various communities to help um, uh, committees like ourselves um, and then to do lobbying um, within the legislature. So they have these two employees. Um, uh, you know, Mary helps them uh, call them with some of our technical uh, technical questions. Um, so they financially come under the umbrella of a Boston land trust um, who wants to have them to move on um, and not have to deal with their financial stuff anymore. So it's a very interesting time for the coalition. Um, they have this steering committee that they want to take uh, more responsibility um, 
uh, and we'll have to see how it goes. Um, there were 42 applicants and they, what, I can't remember how many they picked, four. So I was lucky enough to be one of the picks and uh, the only one outside of the Boston area. Um, and so I'll keep you posted as to how it goes. Well, thank you, Andy. And I think, you know, it's great for Hadley, but great for to have a, somebody on a small town be on that steering committee too. If they're mostly around Boston, they're probably a lot well, of bigger I, communities. If I, if I have to go into Boston four times a year, I might not stay on. <laughs> I might not stay on it, but we'll have to see. Um, so one of my personal goals uh, on the steering committee is to expand the use of CPA funds to help uh, energy conservation in municipal buildings. Because what's more important to preserve than our environment? So we'll see how it goes. So thank you, Andy, very much for being on it and reporting. Um, I sent around a draft of a, for the annual report of a CPA mm -hmm. um, report people had a chance to look at it were there any comments or as long as the projects are correct it's fine okay it's fine mary that that's that's my opinion i would just uh, send it in to jessica and let her deal with it however she does it in the town reports and that's it okay do I put all of our names on it? Jennifer did mention it's easier if there's only one name and in the back of the book it has all the committee members, but mm -hmm. you know, that's part of, the, you know, I wanted you guys to see it because I put all the names on it and I like having your names on it because you all work, you know, put your time and effort into this committee. But what are your thoughts on that? Are you comfortable with having your names on it? Sure. Okay. I will send that in to her. She'll be glad to get it. Okay. As long as you spelled everybody's name correctly. <laughs> I'll make sure Risa got the Smythe and Smith. Smythe. Smythe? Smith. Well, it's I pronounce it Smith, but it's spelled Smith. Smythe. Okay. Yeah. Smith Reed. Thank you. Um, conflict of interest training that we went over already. I sent the email. Um, yeah. the, the CPA website. Any yeah. updates? Um, for if you can take a look at the website, I just I keep trying to make it as you know user friendly and comprehensive. But always, one thing I've noticed some towns do is they have a frequently asked questions section where you can explain a little more and you know language about what the funds can be used for, what they can't be, and what the application process is. And I don't know if people feel that would be a benefit to um, try to expand ours some. Um, I think that would be a good idea. Whatever information we can give them would be very helpful. It's, you know, we'd have to come up with the questions and the answers and then make sure we agree that they're appropriate. But um, I'd be glad to take a stab. And if anyone else wants to do it as well or be very welcome. But Sounds like the uh, FAQ subcommittee. <laughs> is uh is born uh, i'd be happy to help you with that mary okay well um i think it's nice to nice to have people feel like they can get some basic questions answered without um a lot of digging um so we're gonna have a meeting on march 27th right. um i looked ahead to the september because it's nice for people that are looking at the next meeting so we can talk about this next time, but, you know, we don't want to meet on Memorial Day. If we're sticking with Mondays, then um, we can't wait any longer than September 11th or September 25th in order to still be in the warrant. So um, that's, that's the <laughs> proposed. Does that, how does that sound to people? Um, this is one, what year are we talking about now? <laughs> 2023 okay okay All when right. you only you need every six months you have to look at <laughs> yes no 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 I, I was just a little confused i heard you say memorial day and i heard you say september i didn't hear oh, <laughs> labor day you're absolutely right i'm i i said the wrong holiday 
we can't meet Labor Day. Um, so, um, and we don't so want to go into October. So you're proposing but, our first meeting for the fall? Right, September 11th, and then two weeks later, September 25th, with, with applications due September 1st. Uh, the 25th is Yom Kippur. Oh, okay. So I can't I think make we it. ran into this last time. So what do we do? Yes. Uh, well, you can meet without me. Uh, we could do it on the 11th and the 18th, or the 18th and the 2nd. Um, do we have to meet on Mondays? No, we don't. It just seems like that's been traditional in part that's what, because that's what we've been doing. Okay. It tends to be free for people, okay. you know. Um, somehow it seems to be a night when a lot of other meetings aren't scheduled, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do it on the 25th. I think we did this this last year, Andy, without realizing it. So yeah. let's... Um, if we did it on the 18th, that just gives a week um, to follow up on any comments or might questions. Be, both might be a little harder on the applicant. Yeah, on the applicants is what I'm thinking. If we send them out to get more information, they don't have a lot of time to turn that around, obviously. Yeah, yeah. If we do October 2nd and town meeting ends up like the 20th, that <laughs> I'm not sure we get on the warrant and get... Um, so well, I well, think we, you can you can get placeholders in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It does need to get a go through legal and get the finance and um, select board approvals too. So it's you yeah. know, yeah. I'm not quite sure how all that works. You guys may know some of you may know better than me on what timing wise. I know we don't impact like the finance budget, which is why you know it, it doesn't have to be. Um, super early, but um, uh, so we could do yeah, the, 20, they, the 28th and the 11th. So August 28th. Uh, yes. And then have applications due like August 15th. Yeah. Sure. Uh. August 28th. That's, you know, are people tending to be on vacation still? One thing that we tried to stay away from August a little bit, just because it's hard for committees to meet. It's hard for, um, mm -hmm. it just seems to be a little well, more of a challenge that way. But we um, can, um, if you want to do it the 11th and the 25th, I'll be at the meeting on the 11th. Well, I'd rather not. Could we do the 11th and the 26th? And that's fine. That's fine with me if that's okay mm. with people that do it on to a Tuesday. Make an exception. Is that still, Andy, is that? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I need to Google it. Well, we can talk about this. That we are meeting okay. again in four weeks. So let's. All right. Let's, um, I'll get it nailed down. Yeah, let's look at calendars. I just, I think it's really nice. First of all, I don't want to try to contact everybody in July and figure this out, you know? <laughs> it's just, right. Right. Second of all, anyone who wants to put an application in, it's nice for them to understand and know, you know, when to, when to, um, what to expect. So I think it's good to do it ahead of time, but, um, you know, the 26th or the 27th, I just think, I think trying to get committees to meet and have a plan ready for August 15th is, is kind of a, um, harder you know if we can if we can push it off a little bit i think that's helpful september 1st i think is still difficult but at least you know it, it's a little um all right well i'll get the dates nailed down and we'll talk about it next time okay very um, good. for the 27th i couldn't make it until eight on march 27th okay hopefully we'll be done by then <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Okay. Hopefully. Um, anything else to go over or cover or hopefully we voted oh. on everything appropriately oh. in the right order? And Oh, Mary. So what I'm asking about March 27th is that um, I'm busy in South Hadley until um, 
Oh, actually, maybe it's over, but no, until 7.30. So I couldn't be at the meeting until 8 o'clock. Okay. So then I might not be there for that one either. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, do we want to set a different day? Do we want, I mean. No, let's, let's not. Let's just keep it the same and that's it. Sorry, Andy. That's Nothing all right. Personal. It's all right. I will say I don't, I will. We're allowed to have this meeting um, by Zoom. The state keeps extending how long Zoom meetings can be. Um, I It was March something or other. The last time I heard was when you can no longer have Zoom meetings. They have to be in person. So I'll, I'll learn hired. that before we have to post this. Um, Mary, I think the deadline's March 31st. Oh, okay. Thank but they're you, hoping Debbie. to extend it again. Okay, oh. thank you. So is everyone comfortable with another Zoom meeting next time? Sure. Especially with weather. Well, hopefully by then, there's no question about weather, but um, mm -hmm. all right. So March 27th. Sorry, Andy. Um, it's all right. We're not indispensable. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, does anyone want to make a motion to end the meeting? I will I make a motion. To <laughs> I move we adjourn. You move that we adjourn. Second. Yes. Oh, yeah, second. Second. Yes. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.